big shout of praise, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. Thank you for all you are, Lord. All that you've done, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, careful to not ask anything of you right now, Lord but just to give you thanks and give you praise, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're working in this I worship you, I worship you, cause you are.
dark eyes with you. I feel your affection. I love to get lost in you. You're my obsession when I lock eyes with you.
as believers is worship. One of our greatest weapons is worship. See, the enemy doesn't want us to worship because that's a sign of liberty. It's a sign of freedom. It's a sign of victory. It's a sign of saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of my salvation. I'm not ashamed of change. I want us tonight, I want us to lift up our hands. You know, when a cop puts their hand, his gun on you, both hands go up. It's a sign of surrender. It's like, I, I give up. I give up. And tonight, we're giving up tonight. And I want us to sing this song with all our hearts. And we're going to cry out to Abba. Say, God, I give up everything. I give up everything holding me back. I give up everything. everything. I give it to you. Come on. Come on, church.
the Lord. We are glad you are with us tonight in the house of God and all those that are watching us. Amen. We just allow God just to continue moving in your lives and enjoy today because it's going to be awesome. We're going to have a great time. We have Gilbert Escaval with us. Come on, somebody. He is going to bless us. Amen. And he's going to be awesome. So we're going to have a great time. So you may be seated today and enjoy this next announcement. Welcome on behalf of Pastors Edgy and Sonia. We're so glad you're here. Here are a few announcements before we begin. We invite you to join us Wednesday, November 24th for our church family Thanksgiving dinner. If you would like to bring a dessert item, we encourage you to sign up at the foyer desk with Sister Claudia. Also, be sure to invite your family so they can come and fellowship with us here at Living Word. If you would like to be a part of this year's Christmas production and you're 25 years and under, be sure to sign up today by seeing Sister Anika or online. Our cutoff for sign-ups will be held November 16th, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Come pray, believe, and expect with us. Join us every Monday night at 7 p.m. for our Monday night prayer. Would you like to stay updated with us here at Living Word? If so, here's all our social media accounts for you to like, subscribe, and follow. Also, if you happen to miss our services or you would like to hear the rest of any of our services, you can do so by hearing the full message by checking out our podcast. Is this your first time joining us? If so, you can text us so we can get back to you and interact with you on our upcoming events happening here. Another way to connect with us is by joining our Growing Healthy Keys to a Godly Life course, which will begin this upcoming new year. Remember, these courses are college accredited, so sign up today. Hey everyone, we want to remind you guys about our prayer wall. If you haven't brought in your pictures, you guys can always send it in or bring it here on campus and we'll put it up for you guys. We want to encourage you guys to continue to pray, believe, and expect for your families. And remember, with God, all things are possible. Would you like to serve at one of our services? If so, you can register today to become an LW volunteer by going online or you can join us here on campus and sign up at the foyer desk. We appreciate and love all our volunteers. In doing so, we want to honor you by putting your name into our monthly raffle. Be sure to see Pastor Jose before service every Wednesday and Sunday so you can enter into that amazing raffle. Come check out our LW shop located in the cafe after service. And while you're down there, we encourage you to help support our fundraiser and purchase your Frito pie. We have many ways to give towards our ministry. You can give online, text to give, or you may use Zelle. Okay guys, it is that time for our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, you can always raise your hand and our usher will give you an envelope. Once you have all your information filled out during our tithes and offerings, you guys can come back here and drop it here at Dropbox. Thank you. Well, that's all the announcements we have for today. Let's open our hearts and get ready for tithes and offerings. Come on, give the Lord a great clap offering, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we get ready to give, if you need an envelope, lift your hand. I know the ushers are handing out envelopes right now. Um, there is a scripture in Proverbs 11, verse 25, that says these words. It says, a generous person will prosper. Say it with me. A generous person will prosper. Amen. It says, a general person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And, and there is something when we understand this principle that God has blessed us with jobs, our health, our strength, our business. And, and when we give generously from what God has blessed us with, we are giving strength to others. Some say others. Others, we refresh them. So in return, we do this because uh, uh, we give our tithes and our offering. We know this. And that tithe and offering, it opens, it keeps the doors open, keeps everything functioning. We're do remodeling, we're fixing things. And we're doing so much for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. And so it's so awesome that the church does this. And those that are watching us online are doing the same thing. And because we know the power of giving. 
When you understand the power of giving what belongs to God, it is so, it's so impacting, it's, it's so powerful because there's the laws that the word of God has. And, and so if you plant a seed, it grows. If you don't plant a seed, nothing grows. So it, it's according to what we plant, according to what we give. So we give generously, some say generously. Generously, uh, not, not no one's forcing us, no one's forcing you, nobody, nobody is, 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 is um, putting a, a gun to our head, come on somebody. We are saying, God, I give to you because I've been set free, I've been delivered, God changed my life, and I'm generously giving back to what you did. And it's only, it's a, really a tab of what God has done for us, amen. And so 28 years ago, I was lost, I was bound, I was addicted, I was lost. And because somebody was, had a church and someone was, was giving, it was able to be to give my life to the Lord, come to a place to get refreshed and to find my purpose and to find my calling, amen. And that's the same thing that we do. We don't stop it. And we don't stop it. We continue doing what God calls us to do as a church and as a body of Christ, amen. So I want to pray for our tithes and offering and I want to just continue, just trust God, trust God. Someone say trust God. Trust God. So we're going to pray for our tithes and offering. And also, before I pray for that, excuse me, just quick announcements. If you have not been in one of our grow classes, sign up for our grow classes. Amen. You want to hear it. It's going to do so much information. Of stuff will be questioned, the answers in your life, questions that we have. It's going to be awesome. Amen. We'll be doing the beginning of the year. Also for Thanksgiving, um, that Wednesday, we're going to have a, a, a Thanksgiving dinner for all the church and all your family. Bring them out so we can have a good time. Come on, somebody. That Wednesday, just enjoy. Amen. And, and just have a good Thanksgiving. And we're going to have it set up downstairs and in the connect corner. Amen. So like that, any overflow, we could just enjoy and have a good time. And uh, I was going to sit there and say, I don't want to change. I don't want to change our wedding service. This is what we're thankful for. How many, how many are thankful for what God did? And we want to just celebrate. And I say, God, okay, let's come. The, the turkey can wait tomorrow. Hallelujah. Uh, the Thursday, amen. We can do all the prepping because I'm the one. I'm, I, I cook the turkey. Amen. I cook the other thing. My wife does all the other stuff. And we all come together and we have a good time. And so um, I, I, I make my turkey good, man. My turkey don't taste like turkey. That's how good it tastes. It don't taste like turkey. Amen. So we're going to have to make one. Next year, we're going to really be ready for it. So we can, all of us, we can do the, do the whole parking lot and do a whole Thanksgiving. All of us have a turkey off. Amen. It was a good turkey off. So I'm getting hungry already. Huh? That, happens, that happens when you don't eat. Amen. Before service. Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray for the tithes and offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for all those that are here. Thank you for the family, the church. We thank you for the visitors. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. And Lord, we give freely and generously, God, and that you would do the rest, Father God. You called it to grow and to prosper, God, and use it to help others, God. Use it to begin to cause families and restoration and healing in every area, Father God, because we have doors that are open, Father God, Lord Jesus, through this hard time that we can continue being open, Father God, and serving God and loving and, and doing our best, Father God, to do the will of God that you call us to do here in the city of Grand Terrace, Father God. We honor you and we glorify your name, Father God, in our giving. Bless the tithes and the offering in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Come on, give the Lord a great clap offering. Come on, let's all stand tonight, church.
you give the Lord a great clap offering? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, though. How many of the worship team did a great job? Come on. It's some good worship. Amen. But tonight, we have a special guest. Amen. All the way from Long Beach, California. Uh, um, he's been on Jay Leno Showtime. Done all, he's been all over the place. He is a, a great friend. He's, done a, he's always been, uh, 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 what can I say, just awesome to Living Word family. And so let's give Gilbert Esquivel a great, great clap offering as he comes out tonight. Let's enjoy. Amen. Come on, Gilbert. Thank you, bro. Thank you. What's up, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> hey, I didn't dress up tonight, man. I didn't feel like looking good tonight. I just came out looking all thee down. You know what I'm saying? I hope you don't mind, but I have a purpose tonight. I didn't come, I didn't come here to look good. <laughs> I didn't come here to preach good. <laughs> I didn't come here to be a great comedian. I didn't come here to be a great speaker, man. I came to be effective tonight. That's all I care about. You know what I mean? Hey, if you ever want to know what, if you're a good Christian or not, you can know by this. If you never argue with Siri, <laughs> you're a good Christian, man. <laughs> Siri gets on my last nerve, bro. I broke up with Siri. The girl, I broke up with her. I got me a new one. I got the East Indian guy now. <laughs> He's cooler, you know. He talk like this right there. Give me a direct. Like a, you got to make a right. One more mile, you may take a right. <laughs> He's cool. I like him. He raps. <laughs> I let him rap. I heard him rap. I go, hey, Siri, rap. It was a good day. Just waking up in the morning, got to thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No barking from the dog, no smog. And mama cook a breakfast with no hug. I got my grub on. I didn't pig out. Finally got a call from a girl I want to take out. Hooked it up for later as I hit the door, thinking while I live another 24. I got to go because I got me a drop top. But if I hit the switch, I can make the back drop. Shake them up, shake them up, shake them up, shake them. Roll them in a circle of homies and watch me break them with a 7, 7, 11, 7. 11, 7, even back door, little Joe, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. Have a seat, guys. What y'all standing up for? <laughs> I got a standing ovation before I started. <laughs> this is cool, man. Nice church, guys. You know, what makes somebody come to church on a Wednesday night 7.30, instead of staying at home and watching TV and hanging out and doing, what makes you guys come out to do this? I think it's because you love the Lord and you want to know him better and you want to be a better person and you're doing anything you got to do to do it. You're, you know what I mean? I really believe that, man. Congratulations, man, because not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. Not everybody hears the voice of God. Not everybody does, man. You know what I mean? If you have a desire in your heart to be obedient to God, that's a gift from God. God put that in your heart. That's scripture. I don't know where it's at, but it's scripture. I smoke too much churn to remember scripture, guys, all right? So just trust me. You don't believe me? Read your Bible. <laughs> Some of y'all say, I never knew that. Some of y'all say, oh, that's confirmation. I just read that. You feel me right, bro? That's what it says. It says if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe that he is who they say he is, that is a gift from God. Not everybody gets that. He has mercy on whom he chooses to have mercy. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, God had mercy on your soul. You know what I mean? That's what I'm telling you, my brother. I had, you know, pastor said, hey, man, come in. Me and pastor were talking, and I've been telling pastor, I'm a comedian, guys, for those of you who don't care. <laughs> so he was like, I thought he was a comedian. He's not funny right now. What happened? Well, let me tell you something. I've been doing comedy for 30 years. November 1st was 30 years. I just completed 30 years of comedy. I've gone all over the world. I've gone to different places of the world and Mexico, all over the United States. I've done 
Comedy in prisons, in universities, colleges, churches, clubs, Vegas, the biggest, Caesar's Palace, Flamingo, the biggest stages in Las Vegas, television, all that stuff, man. But I got to tell you something. From experience, Hollywood is not big enough for me. Hollywood's not big enough. The human soul is a lot bigger than Hollywood. The human soul is a lot bigger than fame and fortune. Fame and fortune will never satisfy your soul because your soul is too big. There's, you need something really big to fill your soul. And the only one I know is the God who holds the earth in his hand like a grain of sand. And I'm but a grain of sand in this earth. So that's a big God. That's how big of a God it's going to take to fill this man, my soul. And that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nothing in this world, not my wife, who I love, love, love with so much. I love my 34 years we've been married, so you know I got to love that chola. <laughs> Anybody can stay married to a chola for 34 years and still not limp because she jacked you up one time or another? <laughs> You're blessed. <laughs> That's all I ever wanted in my life since I was a little kid, to be in love, to have a woman that I could love. I remember, I, oh, that's all I've ever wanted. When I was single, that's all I ever wanted was someone to love, a woman. I love girls. My daddy loved women. They took him to the grave. That's why I said, I don't want to be like that. I want my own woman, God. I want my woman. I don't want to mess around with all those women. I want one woman. But she doesn't satisfy my soul. There's times when we're there and something's missing. It's missing. Something's missing. Your kids, your wife, your family, they say family's everything. No, it's not. It's a blessing, but it's not everything. God is everything. I walked in with plans on what to say, how to start, what to do. That's all out the door, bro. I told pastor, I go, pastor, man, there's something going on in my life right now, pastor. I think God wants to take me to another level. Hollywood ain't cutting it. Fame eats its young. If God doesn't make you famous, it's going to be a curse. God told Abraham, I am going to make you famous so you can be a blessing to others. People in the world, including myself, we wanted to be Famous so others can bless us. That's not the fame. That fame will cannibalize you. It will eat your soul. Fame. Steve Harvey said it. I wouldn't wish fame on my worst enemy. You know? So I told pastor, I go, pastor, I think God's calling me to a bigger calling, pastor. This stuff ain't filling me, man. I really believe God wants to take, I don't know where, how, or what, but if it's just to be more righteous, that's a whole new level, baby. I can't wait to get there. That's an awesome level to get to. More righteousness. Don't you want to be right? That's why a lot of you come. You want to learn. You're hoping to hear something that will wake you up and say, yeah, I'm going to straighten up. I'm going to stop doing that. I ain't got no more power over me. I'm free, man, just like the word of God says. That's why you're here. You're here for the same reason I started going to church. The reason I go to church, I want to learn how to be a better dad, a better husband, a better believer, a better son, a better uncle, a better everything, a better friend. I need a new character. I need a new heart. There's a song. I'm into secular music, people. I love secular music. I don't care who likes it, who don't believe it. That's on you. My name's Paul. That's between y'all. <laughs> I like my oldies. I like to hear music. I love music. And you know what? God is bigger than Art LeBeau. He's bigger than Brenton Wood. God is bigger than Rick James. 
God is bigger than music. God will use music for his purpose because his word says, I will, everything that happens in your life, I will use it for the purpose, my purpose in your life. The good, the bad, the ugly, the hurts, the pains, the molestations, the successes, the failures, I will use them for my purpose. Not your purpose, my purpose in your life. The world is looking, what is my purpose, Lord? What is my purpose? It ain't about you. It's my purpose for you. I love you more than you love yourself. I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Trust me with my purpose for you. You're going to like it. I got plans for you. They're good ones, not bad ones. Plans to prosper you, not hurt you. You know what I mean? I got these little cats, little stray cats. I feed them all the time. I've been feeding them since they were pu they're little puppies. <laughs> yeah, that's how big they are. Since they were puppies, <laughs> they're little kittens. I used to hold them before their eyes were open. And now they're afraid of me. They won't come near me. But, oh, they want food. They're like, meow, meow. And I give them food. They're like, okay, we're done. We get, I, I got what I wanted. I don't need you no more. Because they're afraid of me. They're skittish. They run. I'm, I'm not going to hurt you, man. I'm feeding you. How am I going to hurt you? Come on, cat. I wish I could talk to the cat. But I kind of feel like some of us are like that with God. We're skittish around God. We're afraid of God. Oh, did I do this wrong? Or am I doing this wrong? Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, um, and you're afraid of God. You're afraid to come to him with boldness and ask him what you need, what you want, and believe him for it. One of those songs that I like, it says, there's lyrics in it that made me really think. It said, you better mind your wants because there's someone who wants your mind. And he will use your wants to get your mind, your heart. What are your wants? What are your wants? I'll tell you where they are. Whatever you think about the most. That's where your treasure is. And where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Whatever you treasure the most is what you're going to think about the most. You know what I mean? Amen. Might be some chamuco in a blue tight dress. I don't know. Might be, <laughs> me, might be your own man. This dude right here, you know he ain't no good for you, but you love him. You loves Harpo. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you think about is Harpo. <laughs> when you're at church, pastors in the message, you, all you think about is Harpo. Oh, my God. How am I going to bail him out? He going to get out. Harpo done went back. I just bailed him out last week, Harpo back. But I love him. What is it, your career, your dreams, your wishes? What is it? What are your wants? You got to mind what you want because the enemy is going to use your wants against you. He'll use them against you. You know, let me, I want to, I don't like to do notes. I never like to do notes. I like to, you know, I like to. You know what I'm saying? But this, I said, uh-uh. I want notes because I don't want to forget anything. I want to be effective. I don't want to be no Mr. Super Speaker here, nothing like that. I don't care about all that. I don't care. I, some of the breasts, best, some of the breast. <laughs> Where your heart is, huh, Pastor? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, bro, Pastor, I have heard some of the best preaching Bishop, stop me, girl. <laughs> I feel guilty up here already, and you keep laughing. <laughs> no. Some of the best preachers that I've ever heard, Bishop Noel Jones. I don't know if you all never heard of him. Bishop, one of the greatest preachers of all times, of our times. I went to his church one time, and I heard him preach. Amazing preaching. But I can't forget, I can't remember what he preached about. I, I got caught up in the show, bro. I got caught up in the, in the ha, and the uh, and all that ha. And so did he, because the audience, the more he did, ha, and, the, and the, uh, the audience went crazy. And the crazier they went, the more he, ha, and, the, uh, uh. <laughs> and I don't remember anything about the message, Pastor. I, I, I do remember the, the ATM machine they were spinning around. They had an ATM machine on a skateboard just passing it around, you know what I mean? No excuses. <laughs> oh, no, we got one right here, player. Uh. I remember the lady that kept getting up every five minutes 
to go to the bathroom. She didn't, I don't know where she went, but every time she came back, she would get up with some nice sunglasses and she would come back with different ones, get up with different ones, come back with different. I go, this girl's putting on a sunglass fashion show at church. <laughs> but I can't remember the great preaching. Some of the most boring messages I ever heard were more, the most effective. When you go to college and you go to university, then professors are not exciting. But you're learning valuable information that's going to help you in your future, in your prosperity, and a better quality of life from a higher learning. So don't get caught up in the show, you know. The, one of the most effective things that happened in my life when I was going through a two-year depression because of something dumb that I did, I sinned. And I was depressed for two years because I felt so guilty. I wouldn't have felt guilty before, but all of a sudden God put this spirit in me. Now I get guilty every time I do something wrong. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I remember I went to church with Sunday morning and the pastor, I can't remember what his message was, but he said something in that message that snapped me out of my depression. It just reminded me of something that I had read in the word before. Thy word have I stored in my heart that I may not sin against you. See, when you read the word of God, you may not understand it then, but you are downloading it and it will upload. It will come to you when you need it. You know? And so... I, uh, see, this is why I'm glad I brought notes, man. I, I, uh, I'm glad because I, see, I would have forgot, Pastor. I mean, that's Sherm back in the days. Y'all don't believe me. I used to smoke a lot of Sherm back in the day. Y'all know what Sherm is. For those of you, I don't know either. I just know the initials, PCP. That's all I know. And, and it makes you do dumb stuff. I went to jail behind PCP for arguing with the stop sign. See, this is why, Pastor, I got to learn how to, because I get caught up, Pastor. I get taken away, man. I do. I get just, I stray away in my thoughts, and I forget to where I was trying to get to. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's why I want to learn, man. I want to learn. I go, no, I got to learn, Lord. I had to be disciplined. What was I saying, man? That Sherm threw me off. <laughs> oh, you just remember the stop sign stuff, right? You know, the, uh, the word says, uh, above all else, guard your hearts. For from it flow all the issues of life. Guard your hearts, your minds, your thoughts. Everything starts from a thought. The world was created before God made anything. It was a thought. He planned everything out. He knew you. He knew you were going to be here tonight. Before he laid the foundations of the world, he thought all this through, brother. Everything starts. All issues. You got issues. I got issues, bro. We all got issues that we got to deal with. Those issues started from a thought. You got to guard your hearts for from it flow all the issues of life. I've done prison ministry for many years and I've done over 60 prisons. In Mexico and across the United States. And in these prisons, they have guards, officers, correction, correction officers, guards, prison guards. Their job is to make sure the inmates don't escape, right? Just looking at me. You've never been to prison, huh, bro? Okay, trust me, bro. <laughs> well, that's what a prison guard does, make sure the inmates don't escape. And they also keep the public from coming in. Just, yeah, they got to search you. Anybody went to go visit anybody? Don't lie. Raise your hand. Don't be lying, y'all. Okay. You know what they do. They, you, what they put you through. They got to search you, run you, make, all that stuff. Because they have to guard what goes in and what comes out. When we do these ministries, they tell the comedians. They give us rules because they know how comedians can get. But they tell us, do not make fun of the guards. And do not make the inmates make any sudden movements. You can't do altar calls. Everything is a controlled movement. If an inmate gets up by himself and what, it looks like an escape. He can get shot. 
for that. Help me out, some of y'all that have been to prison. <laughs> Bobby, hello, Bobby. <laughs> I thought Bobby was a lot of, amen, bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we were down in Mississippi, out in the boondocks, in a little prison, early in the morning, man, a guy, maybe 8 o'clock, we were going to do an early program. This ministry, they're called Prison Fellowship, would hire the comedians to come in so we can break the ice, be icebreakers for the inmates so they can listen to the message of Jesus Christ. They feel that comedy has that power. That's why they do it. So they brought us as clowns in. <laughs> One day, I was the MC. We had singers, speakers, singers and speakers, and I was the MC. I'm the one that's going to introduce the acts. I got to do my comedy. But this morning, we usually our programs are in the afternoon. They had one in the morning, 8 o'clock. These inmates were mad because they had to get up early to go hear a church program, and they had no choice. Now they're mad because I don't want to be here. Plus, you making me get up early to come and listen to this? Now they're mad. They were mad. Oh, my God. They were red, bright red with anger. And that was just the black guys. <laughs> That's how mad they were. And then, here comes old Cool Hand Luke Warden. Remember Cool Hand Luke the Warden? Who remembers that movie, Cool Hand Luke? Shaking the bush, boss, shaking the bush. Remember the... The warden, suspenders, belly, white shirt, hat. He talk like that. Now, you boys, you know what I mean? That's how he talk. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, bro, this warden, their warden, comes out dressed just like that dude in the movie. Shirt, suspenders, hat, had a big old red neck back here. Big old puffy red neck. Pink, bright pink. Those are the ones you got to be scared of. <laughs> the ones that are pink, they're scary because they're mad or drunk, one of the two. So here's this warden goes off on these inmates. Listen here, boys. These kind of folks came down here from all over the United States of America to do a show for you. You best be on your best behavior. I swear for God, I'll put you back in your cell so quick, you're going to make your head spin. You understand me? He's talking to him like that. And I'm like, no. I go, first of all, I feel like I'm in a Richard Pryor comedy bit because Richard Pryor does a bit about that. Very same thing about a warden who did that and gave that same verbatim, that speech. And here I'm watching it before my eyes. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in the middle of a Richard Pryor bit. I got to be funny. The guys are mad, and he's making them angrier by yelling at him. I'm like, oh, man. Okay, here we go. All right, boys. Be on your best behavior. Okay, come on. Go ahead and start your program. <laughs> so I go up there. I'm like, in my head, thanks a lot. <laughs> and I'm over here trying to tell jokes to some angry prisoners who just got yelled at. And I got to be funny. And they ain't having it. And I'm like, yeah, they were like, hurt. They got up and walked out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> They weren't laughing. They were not laughing. I'm like, oh, what do I do? I saw an I saw, uh, officer behind me, one of the guards. This brother, I don't know who he was or why he was even there. He had one shirt out, part, like one tucked in. You know, he was just standing behind me. You know, the you can see the woods. You know, the woods, they were behind. We're in the middle of the woods, people. And he, he's the only one laughing at my jokes, though. And he didn't have no teeth. His grill was all missing. You know what I mean? He just like, and he was laughing. <laughs> I, around, I could see the woods through his teeth. I, don't know, I was like. <laughs> and I wanted to bag on him so bad. I wanted to just lay into him so bad. But I kept hearing his voice. Do not mess with the guards. Do not make fun of the officers. So I was like. Turn around, look at it, I go, oh, my God, I want to just say something so bad. Do not make fun of the officers. 
Finally, I said, you know what, bro? Do me a favor, homie. Stand over here, bro, because you're making me nervous back there, man. This brother had a big old afro that he hadn't combed since the 60s or the 70s. And he had a nerve to have it parted on the side. There was people living in that hair. I ain't lying, people. Some Jamaicans or something, because that brother was all ratted and tatted up there, right? But he, he didn't, so he goes and sits down. He, I had him stand right here, because it's, nah, it's on. I already made up my mind, nah, nah, bro. <laughs> you know, if I'm going out, I'm going out swinging. <laughs> so I'm doing my jokes, and he's right there laughing, and finally going, man, what happened to your grill, dog? <laughs> I go, what happened? Looks like you've been flossing with a chainsaw. What happened? I, go, I, go, I was telling him, I go, you look like you could eat corn through a fence. <laughs> you know? Dude, let me tell you. The whole place exploded. I was making fun of his cigarettes. His, he, he had cigarettes that just said cigarettes. They didn't have a brand name. I'm dogging his cigarettes, his hair, everything. The inmates were running around, jumped up, screaming, laughing, running around. And if, anyone wanted, if any of them wanted to escape, that would have been the time to do it. You know where the other officers were? They were on the ground, slapping the ground. Ah, laughing so hard because I just kept hitting this dude. <laughs> After that, here comes the preachers, came up and shared the gospel. They were ready for it. You know what I mean? Guard your heart. What goes in and what comes out. You got to guard what comes out. It's not, it's not what goes in, what you eat and what you drink that defiles you. It's what comes out that defiles you. And we got a lot of ugly down in there. The Bible says that we have these evil desires that lurk deep within us. And if you don't face that ugly truth, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Because there's nothing, nothing worse than an enemy that lives within. And your own desires are your enemies. That's why you have to mind your wants. Because there's someone who wants your mind. He will use your own desires against you. That's why we got to be careful. Guard your heart, what you let in. Don't let gossip in. Gossip is a deadly sin. I can walk into this church with a joint, smoking it, and you guys will hit me before I come in. Nah, bro, we don't allow that in here. I can walk in here with a frajo. Nah, brother, we don't allow smoking in this church. <laughs> but let me come in with some juicy gossip. <laughs> Sit down, brother. Who, who do we got to pray for? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, Pastor? The Bible says that pastor is, pastor, the Bible says that pastor is like honey. <laughs> oh, Pooh Bear. <laughs> Edgy the poo. <laughs> the Bible says gossip is like honey in the mouth, but when it gets to the stomach, it turns into gravel. Whenever you're hearing that juicy gossip about what that person did to this person, that puts poison in your heart. You have just allowed poison in your heart. Gravel in the most delicate part. Would you put gravel? gravel in your stomach? No, but that's what you're doing when you're listening to gossip because it's going to poison your mind against that person. You are now holding a resentment and a grudge and a, a, you're looking down at another human being made in the image and likeness of God because this person who has an issue with them now made their enemy your enemy. Now you're compounding your enemies, those within and those around you. You already got enough enemies to deal with inside of you. You don't need somebody else's enemies. If you're going to listen, man, if somebody did something to somebody else, don't let. They got to deal with that. They're hurt, and you can't blame them. They're hurt. Somebody dogged them. But let them deal with that. Don't you take it on too. See, don't do that. It's not Good. You have to guard 
your heart. Guard it from negative thinking, from beating, from guilt and shame. Those are two heavy burdens that are too heavy for you to carry. Jesus died on the cross so that you don't have to carry that weight. He did that to lighten your load. You don't need to carry shame and guilt no more. I got news for you. You're guilty, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Very much guilty. But that's why you got to be more grateful for what happened on the cross 2,000 years ago. Stop asking God, oh, I want a closer walk with thee, if you're not ready for it. Because the closer you get to God, the more light's going to shine on you. And the more light that shines on you, the more filth you're going to see. The closer you get to God, the more of a sinner you realize you are, that I am. But that's not to feel condemned. It's to be grateful for what you were saved from, what you have been set free from. Guard it. Protect it. Protect your heart. God gives you a word. Trust me, the enemy is going to come and try to steal that word. When God told Adam and Eve, do not touch that tree. All the other ones are cool, but stay away from that one. If you touch it, you're going to die. And what did the enemy do? He came and twisted those words. He took a truth and he twisted it. And he got him to fall. Whenever you come to church, you hear something that's going to change your life. I promise you, the enemy is going to come and try to take that word from you. He's going to try to get you to doubt it. He's going to use someone sitting next to you at church to do it. He's going to use somebody at home to do it. He's going to use somebody as soon as you get on the freeway to cut you off to do it. This is very important. Watch what comes in. And watch what goes out. Watch what you say. Your words are more powerful than you will ever realize. Someday when we stand with him, you're going to realize how powerful your words were. And you're going to regret not using them more wisely. Because the Bible says we're made in the image and likeness of God. And our God is a creator. So we are also inventors. We create. Just like our creator. Because we're made in his image and his likeness. So those of you who want to write a book, you got no excuse. The creator, you're made in his image and his likeness. You too can be creative with books, with music, with movies. Whatever it is you want to create or invent, we are made in the image and likeness of God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Not only... Are we inventors? But he loves. Therefore, we too can love. He calls things that are not as if they were. And so can we. That song you guys were singing about the dry bones, live, live, live. You got to speak words into your bones, into the bones in your family, into the dead bones around you. You got to speak the word of God. Into them bones. The Holy Spirit will come and blow this wind and put flesh on those bones. You do your part. He'll do his part. You speak his blessings. You speak his promises over the dead bones around you. Your own dead bones. I speak to my dead bones. I love that song you guys were singing. I go, yes. Oh, man. I live. Live. You got to speak to yourself. You got to speak to your soul. Just like the psalmist said, why is thou cast down, O my soul? Have faith in God, for I shall yet praise him. You got to start speaking like a gangster. You guys got to start getting gangster with what you're saying, with the word of God. You are only as strong as your affiliations, people, whether you're in prison or you're out here. If you're you join in union with Christ, then that's it, brother. You're complete because of your union with Christ, according to Colossians 2.10.
You got to start speaking those truths. Speaking them truths, the word of God. You got to get into the word so you'll know what to speak. Those words will bring life to your family members. They want nothing to do with God. Some of your family members are more saved than you are. They just don't know it and neither do you. Because you're not thinking ahead. You're not looking in faith. You're not, see, our God, if you go and read the prophets, go read all those prophets. And they all, when they were prophesying about what was going to happen to the temple, what was going to happen to Israel, what the Babylonians were going to do, they were speaking about the future as if it happened in the past. That's our God. Our God calls things in the future as if they happened in the past. He calls things in the future as if they're happening now. You don't believe me? Read it. Read. Read prophecy. Read the prophets. That's what they say. They speak about the future like it was in the past. I said, wow, that's my God. My God sees me complete and holy and blameless before his eyes. I don't see myself like that. Why? Because I walk by sight, not by faith. Faith walks in the future. Faith gives thanks ahead of time for a prayer. Faith starts living like if that prayer was already answered. That's faith, people. Those are people who pray in faith. The ones that say, Lord, please do this. Thank you. And then you say, I want to thank you ahead of time. And now you start treating that family member like he's already a Christian. Treat them like they're already believers. Stop talking to them. Oh, you're no good. You need to stop doing this. You need to do this. Oh, you're this. Stop all that. You're just confirming it. When we were kids, I remember when we were kids, man. We had a family member that went off on us one time. I was a little kid, man. And my, my mom went out. She left us with her to babysit. And, you know, poor mom. She didn't come home for two days like she usually did. Babysitters used to get mad. Because my mom would book it and she wouldn't come back because she felt like it. For real. There was time babysitters were mad. Their parents were going, where's your mama? We don't know either. Mama said she's going to get us a stepdaddy and we're waiting on him. <laughs> and she did. She brought us home a stepdaddy. He wasn't even our stepdaddy. We just like calling him that because he didn't want to work. He sat on the steps all day. We're like, get his job, stepdaddy. We got to pay this rent, man. Come on, Adam. We used to call him Adam because my mom was always saying, let me Adam, let me Adam. <laughs> and you know, Rasa, how we are. We nickname each other. We nickname that. That's what we call him, Adam, because that's what we do. We nickname you. We grow up with nicknames, right, Rasa? But we don't, we're not creative with it. We call you by whatever's wrong with you. I mean, we had a homeboy missing a finger. We called him El Nueve. Nine. We got another homeboy with a crooked eye. He looks up. We call him Buscaviones. That's Spanish. We're looking for airplanes. And he answers to it, too. We're like, hey, Buscaviones. Like, What's up? I go, you tell me. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. It sounds mean. But it's true. We nickname me. People think it's mean. It's not mean. It's just the way we, our culture is. Yeah, if, you want, if you're politically correct, do not hang around with Mexicans, man, because you will get offended. We don't know nothing about being politically correct. That's what I'm learning how to pray now, man. I'm thanking God. I don't care. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to start seeing like you. I'm going to start living my life the way. I want to be like, I want to follow your example. If you can call things that are not as if they were, I'm going to start calling all my family saved. I'm going to start calling anything that I want. I'm going to start calling it, speaking it, speaking meat on dry bones. God gave us that permission, people. And not only that, he gave us the assistant, the Holy Spirit. All, I gotta, all we got to do is wake them up and shake them up. Let them get on up. The Holy Spirit will start putting meat on them dry bones. And they'll be walking flesh that family member who's living in the streets because of meth, watch. Some of you are here. You're proof of what I'm talking about. You were living under a bridge. You were living on the streets. Now look at you. On a Wednesday night, you're here with the hands lifted up praising God. That, I get, I'm getting chills right now just thinking about that. I'm getting chills just thinking about that, guys. It's not easy. I know that, man. It's not easy. But... We have to trust. We have to trust God. You got to keep. See, what's the problem is this. 
the enemy, can, he'll use the word of God against you. He'll use truth against you. Look what he did to Jesus when he tempted him in the desert. He told him, jump off this building. Doesn't it say in the word that not even a, you won't, what does it say, Pastor? You won't even strike a stone on your foot or break. And it's true. It said that. But Jesus knew the word. Jesus was the word. How can you tell the word what it says when he is the word? You can't run game on Jesus. You can, make, you can think you're conniving and manipulating him by doing your little cositas. Like, hey, you can't run game on Jesus. Who do you think you are? Just because you manipulated the system, just because you manipulated your family, just because you manipulated people at work, doesn't mean you can manipulate the word, the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. How dare you come at me with your lies? So he did. He tried to say, John. Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's why you got to know how you word, use your word, man. Because don't forget, the devil has a fist too. You know what I mean? He can hit you too. He counterpunches. He's a, he's a great counterpuncher. He's a great counterpuncher. Read it in the word. He did it to Adam and Eve. He counterpunched. He does it. He'll do that. Every time you learn something new, every time. That's why even in the teachings that I'm talking about, that name it and claim it. Remember all that? Name it and claim it and confess it stuff. That was a teaching that's in the word, but people went and corrupted it by their selfish ambitions and their materialism. They made that, they made that look ugly and awful, and the enemy used that to take away the power and get people to stop believing that your words can change things. The word of God does not come back void. It accomplishes accomplishes everything you set it out to do. So start sicking the word on, on people. Start speaking the word on people. Stop talking about people how they're not. Stop walking by sight. Start walking by faith. Stop preaching faith if you're not walking it yourself. We walk by faith, not by sight. Stop going by what you don't have yet. Go by what you asked for. Go by what Jesus said. If you ask anything in my name, the Father will give it to you. If you don't doubt. You know what I'm saying? I know it's easier said than done. But you guys sang another song called Waymaker. Remember that song? Waymaker. Promise keeper. And he is. God keeps his promises. That's why his promises are my shield and my protection. When we were kids, we used to play them games. Remember the games we used to play? Hide and go seek and all that stuff. Red Rover, Red Rover, said Julio right over. <laughs> Tag, you're it. Remember? And you would get tagged. And they're like, no, no, you can't touch me. I got my shield, my invisible shield. And that's it. You couldn't touch Timmy. He's got that invisible shield he comes out with. That's why he always wins. But you can't do it because the invisible shield works in tag. People respect that invisible shield. <laughs> Little kids believe in an invisible shield. We're adults and God tells us that his promises are our shield and our protection. Why can't we believe that? Why can't we walk in that? Feel me? Don't let that. Those people started, they took away the credibility of the word of God where we too can call things that are not as if they were. And I'm telling you right now, I'm naming it, I'm claiming it, I'm confessing it, I'm speaking it, and I'm telling the truth. I am telling you, I am a righteous man, a man of God who prays fervently. I am. I got a pure heart. Feel me? I got a pure, awesome relationship with Jesus Christ. My ways are pleasing to God. And because my ways are pleasing to him, even my enemies will be at peace with me. That's his promise. That's my shield. Can't touch this. All you haters, can't touch this. I got the shield right here. You may not see it right now. I don't care what you see. I don't care what I see. I know what God says. And he said, 
that Jesus Christ is going to change my life. He didn't tell me to change my life. He said, Jesus Christ is going to change it. I tried changing my life, and I made a bigger mess out of it in church. But I didn't know. I didn't know it was Jesus' promise to change me. But that's what it is. It's his promise. So if you come at me with accusations, here's my shield. Can't touch this. My righteousness is Jesus Christ. He's going to change me. You may not like what you see now, but come back in a couple years. Watch what you see then. Can't touch this, baby. His promise is in Galatians that I cannot follow. If I follow the flesh, I'm going to end up dead. But if I follow the spirit, I will find life. And it says, this is what got me, people. This is another shield. Can't touch this. It says, the Holy Spirit will produce fruit in your life. Woo! You mean I don't have to produce fruit? He's going to do it if I just trust him and let him and get out of his way and thank him for what his promises? Thank you, Lord. That's a big load off my chest. A lot of guilt and shame and fear. Woo, you just took it away, Lord. It's not my job. It's the Holy Spirit's job. That's his promise. He's going to produce fruit in you. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Because the accuser, the accuser of the brethren, he's all around you. He's at home. When you get home and those family members, ah, he's a hypocrite. Nah, he thinks he's out toward Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He'll be drinking next week. What's that? Yeah. People at work, ah, you're a hypocrite. You're one. Uh, you're not. All right, so it's going to last only a little bit. Oh, yeah, you're phony. You're a fake. How can you go to church and I look how you're acting? And go, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but give me a couple years. Watch what, watch what God's going to do in a couple years. How many of you guys have trees in your yard? How many of you guys have a tree in your yard? Did you see it growing? Huh? Is it a big tree? Did you see it grow or did it just grow without you even realizing it was growing? All right, then. That's you. You're growing whether you like it or not, whether you feel it or not, whether you know it or not. You're changing, bro. You're growing, man. You just can't see it because it's slow, man. It's a process. Day by day. Mistake by mistake. We learn the hard way. I learned how not to get hit by keeping my guard up. <laughs> when I drive, hey, you don't keep it. Okay, all right. Boom. Keep it up. Okay. <laughs> After you get hit so many times, people, remember when you were little? Ah! You already learned. You put the hand right there. If it was my mom, it was worse. It was worse. You went, I'm like, get the little money. Well, you got madder. You know your mom's mad when she's cussing herself out. She was calling herself names. Hijo de this. And I go, you're my mom. You're talking about you. My mom would hear us with a cord to the iron, man. It wouldn't have been so bad, but the iron was still on it. Get a plancha marks on my face going to school. No, I just went too high on the creases, you know. <laughs> Man, Pastor, I got to stop the joking, bro, because I started joking, it throws me off from where I was. See, this is why Pastor let me do this, people, because I told Pastor, Pastor, I got a feeling God's got a higher calling for me, Pastor, because even the jokes, people, I don't even, this doesn't fulfill me. No, You know what I get the most blessings from, Pastor, and the most fulfillment? I do a little show called the Night Owl Show, and I go on there and I just play music. And I used the people for the music. I draw them in, and then I hit them with Jesus. I use the songs that they're listening to. I, I, huh, Pastor? Pastor came on the show one time, and I use the songs. Whatever the song is singing about, I use it for a message. I brought a pastor in one time, Pastor Jimmy Rocha. And I go, Pastor, I'm going to do a little thing. I'm going to challenge you. He goes... Where was I? Pastor Jimmy. I go, Pastor, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to play an oldie, and you're going to preach a message. So I go, all right. So sure enough, boom. Sitting in a pie, waiting for you. 
and I let it play, let it play, and all that. He goes, all right, I got it. Pastor came out there with a quick three-minute message on that, the words from that song. Turned it to the glory, gave it to the God. <laughs> Did another song. I played about five or six songs. Every song, I got it. And I would turn it off, and he would preach a message. I'm like, Pastor, that's awesome. But that's what happens when the word is in your heart. That's what, whatever is in a man's heart, that's what comes out. And you could be talking, I could take, man, I could tell you right now, I could take anything, any subject, boxing, and I'll turn it into a message, bring it back to Jesus Christ and him on the cross and resurrected. Football, sports, whatever it is, it, subject is, we should be able to bring it to the cross. Whatever gossip somebody brings to you, bring them to the cross with it. You might save them from having anger and hatred towards this person. Bring them to the cross. Whatever conversation it is, bro, I'm sick and tired of these conversations that I have with my friends. They're boring. I love my friends, but they're boring. All they want to talk about is what's going on in this world. Okay, but I want to talk about what's going on outside of the world. What's going on? The future of this world. Who created this world? I want to talk about God. I want to talk about truth. Because right now, people, in these times, Pastor, what time am I going to be done? You put a clock up here, but I have no idea what time. You don't want to get, give a comedian, here's a clock and here's a mic. Keep the clock. I got the mic. <laughs> But you guys were singing that song real quick, now that I remember, because I forgot. PCP, say no to drugs. <laughs> Waymaker. My little brother, we were renting a house, a three-bedroom house, for, back in 83, for $500. That was good even back then. For a three-bedroom house, there was like 30 of us Mexicans in there too, so it was big enough for us. Ten in each room, we're good. Of course, we all slept on, slept on one twin bed, but still, it was good, you know. I'm exaggerating, but there was a lot of us. And my brother breaks into the landlord's house because he was shermed out. Changes his mind, he comes to his mind, leaves everything right there on the porch. <laughs> we lived right across the street. The neighbors saw him, my little brother, go in and watching him the whole time. They told the landlord who it was. Boom, they kicked us out. We got evicted. We had nowhere to go, people. We, had no, we, we were poor. We had to chip in and pay the rent together. And now we had to move. So we're looking for places. Nobody wanted to rent us a house because there was too many of us. We had to get a five or six bedroom house or a hotel or something, they said, because <laughs> y'all are too many. But those were too expensive. They were like $1,800, $2,500, which is cheap nowadays. But back then, bro, $500 was, you know, was hard for us. Now you got to talk about $1,800, $2,000, and we didn't, couldn't do it. And we exhausted every possibility. They have programs that you can do, little things, games you can play. When you're getting evicted, evict some of you guys have been evicted before. Back me up on this. You get these guys, these wannabe lawyers. Oh, I can get you six months. Give me this much money, and I'll extend it. And they do. They got these little games they play. Well, we ran, we ran that game for six months. Now we're running out of time. And now we got nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. And my mom goes, mijo, what are we going to do? And I don't know why I said this. I said, Mom, don't worry. God is going to do, God's got us. God's going to make a way. He'll take care of us, Mom. She said, all right, mijo. That week, I was watching TV, and there was a show that I used to watch all the time, a game show called Scrabble with Chuck Woolery. And I was good at it. I said, man, they would say, we need contestants. I go, I should go do that. I can do that. So I went down there. To Hollywood, there was like a room for like 300, 400, 500 people that were auditioning for this. And the way they picked their people, so you just had to get up and say hello and introduce yourself. And they would be able to tell who was good for TV and who's not. So when I, I wasn't even doing comedy at the time. I wasn't no comedian. 
I remember I got up and all I said was, what, so I made a joke about what everybody was something, and I got a big laugh from the audience, and I got picked. I went on that game show. I was champion for three days. I was beating everybody, teachers, pilots. I was whooping everybody at this word game, this cholito up there on TV, whooping everybody. I was champion for three days, people. I won $5,300. Now, hold on. You don't get that money, though, right away. Sorry, I know, I wish you, but you don't get that money right away. <laughs> I know, huh? What good is it? Because you got to wait three months. You got to wait for three months for the money. That's what they tell you up front. Whatever you win, it takes three months to get. We got to collect from the sponsors, and we ship it out to you. So here I was. I go, you know, I won. And we had these people helping us try to find a house. It was a white man. A black man and a black lady. You're saying, why are you saying race? Because the only time you hear anything about race, it's always negative. You never hear good stories like this. That white man and the black woman and the black man were trying to help Mexicans find a place so they didn't have to live in the streets. That's beautiful. That's cool in itself. But you don't see that stuff on the news. Oh, black turns against Mexican, Mexican against white, black. You know, they want to just, you know what I'm saying? You never hear the good news. So that's why I'm saying that. So they told us, they go, hey, are you guys, um, how much money do you have saved up? And I'm like, well, uh, nothing. We don't have nothing saved up. We're trying to just, you know. He goes, you don't have nothing saved up at all? I go, no. They go, because there's some people selling a house up the street, a three-bedroom house. And I'm like, well, how are we going to buy a house if we can't even rent a house? He goes, you don't have no money or nothing? I go, no, not, I'll have, in three months I'll have some money. I'm going to be a rich Mexican. <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? I said, yeah, I went on a game show and I won and they gave me a voucher, long old voucher. You know, you know it wasn't Mexican. There was Mexican over there, a napkin here. Oh, you fed you, homie. <laughs> this is professional. Long voucher, this big, gold. I remember it was gold. So the guy gets it, he's like, he goes, you know what, let's show this to the homeowners. Maybe they'll take this as a down payment. They took it. We were into that house just like that, people. <laughs> God may not show up on your time, but what they say, he's an on-time God. He is a way maker. And he's done it time and time again. That's just one story. God is a way maker. Yes, he is. And you know what, people? You got to get into the word. I'm going to close with this, man, because I don't know how much time I'm already over. <laughs> but get into the word, you know. And when I was praying, I said, Lord, I don't, I want to go to a higher place, Lord, but I don't want to be a great preacher. I don't want to be a great speaker. I don't want to be, I just want to be an effective one. I want to be an effective speaker, Lord. You know what I mean? I just want to be, make sure that it's effective. You know, this is what my prayer is. You know, so I tell you, people, look, get into your word. And God told me, if you want to be a good speaker, an effective speaker, then you got to learn how to be an effective listener. You'll never be a great preacher or a great speaker until you become a great listener. Start spending time with people, regular Joes. Everybody has a story. You will learn from it. I promise you, you will learn about life, about human nature. You'll learn what it is. You'll learn. And I'm like, thank you, Lord, because I fail miserably in that. I'm sorry, guys. God gave me two mouths and one ear. I don't know about you guys, but I do more talking than I do listening. But I'm grateful that God showed me that. That if you want to be an effective speaker, encouraging people to give their life to Jesus or to keep trusting in Jesus, then you got to learn how to start spending time and listening to people. And you got to learn how to listen to his voice because you have to be really prayerful and careful because the enemy is slick. He's smart. If he can just get you to, if he can just raise a reasonable doubt in your heart, he's got you. 
listen to his voice. His sheep know his voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and they listen. They run from a stranger's voice. I had that happen to me. I almost lost my marriage because of them voices. I could tell you stories in time and time again about the voices, the times that I heard God's voice and the enemy's voice, but you have too. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And it was the times that I listened to his voice that I was blessed and I have testimonies about. It's the times that I didn't listen to his voice that I have nothing but shame and I can't even talk about the things that I did. That's what happens when you don't recognize the voice of the shepherd. But when you start learning the voice of the shepherd and start getting really fine-tuned with it, then you too will be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He guides me in all righteousness for his name's sake. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they strengthen me. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You have prepared a feast before me in the presence of my haters. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is faith calling things that are not as if they were, calling the future as if it's happening right now. That's faith. Grow in it. Go with it. God bless you all. Thank you very much. We can bring up Pastor Edgy right here. Hey, listen, guys. I normally really don't do this because I always, I'm always just doing my show and then I tell you hope. The pastor said, and we're not in prison. <laughs> if there's anybody here, man, you're struggling, you've struggled, you've tried and tried. Sometimes you do good, sometimes you do bad. You just need to be set free. You know who you need to be set free from? You. You're your own worst enemy. The enemies you got within you, they're lurking deep inside. Your church going and your Bible reading and your discipline and your being sober and your being clean ain't going to help you in that area. Only the Spirit of God will help you. That's what we need. So if anybody here, you want faith, more faith. You want to trust God more and you want to be set free from yourself to be able to be used by Him. Come on up. Come on up, man. Come on up. Pastor, where you at, Pastor? Right here. Come on up, guys. If you're like me, man, and all you want to do is be better, a better son of God, a better father, a better brother, a better, better uncle, better nephew, whatever it is, man, you just want a closer walk with God. You need more faith. You need that. You need to start speaking different. You need to start thinking different. Who needs to start thinking different? You know what I'm saying is true. Well, it all begins by admitting it, bro. You got to admit it. Don't be too proud to say, yeah, Lord, forgive my unbelief, Lord. I believe you, Lord, but forgive my unbelief. We're going to pray this for us, not just for you, for us. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing these people in on a Wednesday night to come and learn about you. We want to be free, Lord. We want to be set free to serve you, Lord. We want you to use everything that's happened in our life, the failures and the successes, the hurts and the pains, the joys and the sadness. It is your promise that you're going to use them for your purpose in our life. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Increase our faith. Help us start being more like you. 
We are made in your image and your likeness. Help us with creativity. Help us with loving others. Help, and, help us with loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. They're the hardest people to love, Lord. Help me love them. And that's your instructions to trust you and to love one another. If we do those two things, it covers everything, Lord. Help us do that. Help us, Lord. Above all else, help us protect our hearts. Help us stop thinking wrong. Help us start talking wrong. Help us stop doing wrong. Change. Give us a new heart. We need a new heart, Lord. We need, a new, we need to be bold. We need to be gangsters in our faith, Lord. We used to be gangsters for the neighborhood. We used to be gangsters in the prison system. We were gangsters for the devil, Lord. Help us learn how to be bold and confident in you and be gangsters for Jesus. Fearless preaching. Fearless. Because we no longer look at our own righteousness, but your righteousness. Help us share that message with those who are lost. Help us, Lord. Give us a new heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, you just, you know, just where you're at right now, know something that he said. The enemy will use your wants against you. Your wants against you. You know, a lot of times what happens is when we see God doing something, because the Bible says you give the desires of your hearts. And it's not what you thought that you should deserve. The enemy sees that. And he says, okay, well, let me give him something else that he wants that will pull him away from what God wants to do. And he'll shine it up and he'll make it look like gold. In reality, it is fool's gold. And he robs us of our purpose and our destiny because he used the wants against us. So we have to remember God does everything in steps, in steps, in steps. Why? It's because he knows sometimes we can't handle this want but he can give us what we need for now. And as we get closer and closer, everything will begin to fall in its place. Believe me, I know. I've seen God do it for me, and I see the enemy try to give me some wants to pull me away. And I said, I'll refuse that. I refuse that. So I want to pray right now for you that you're saying, that. I haven't seen my wants yet, but does not mean they're not coming. Does not mean God's not going to do what he said he's going to do. So just get ready for something powerful to take place in your heart. Remember, we are equipped to win. God has been equipping you for what's ahead of you. God's getting you ready for your wants, getting you ready for your purpose, getting you ready for your destiny, getting you ready to restore the marriage, restore everything that belongs to you. And so we're praying, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we know you are taking steps to fix things that in our lives and the wants that are in our lives. And right now I come against every demonic power and every lie of the enemy and every strategy that Satan might use to rob us, Father God. I rebuke it right now. I rebuke that mind that is twisted because of something going on within its mind, thinking you haven't gave me what I want, God. And, and you think that God is trying to hold it back from me. No, God is preparing you step by step to get you where he wants you to be. And Lord, we just honor you and we glorify your name, Father. And we thank you that you know what you wanted to say today. You already had it laid out before the foundations of the earth, oh God. We glorify your name, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I want to just lift up your hand. We're going to worship. As we sing it out, just come on, just lift up your hands. Just begin to worship. Come on, just begin to worship.
Let's give the Lord a great clap for free tonight. Come on, give the Lord a great shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, we were in the back, and, and he's a uh, pastor. I just I got something in me. I said, do, do what you got to do. I said, just go and, and just do. Amen. Because God, God already knows. I said, you just go. Go. You just go. Because he was like, just so God is doing something, something different. I said, go. I said, do it. Don't, don't worry. Just come. Our churches, we know. Amen. Uh, rule number 21, everything is subject to change. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So I hope you enjoy it tonight. Amen. And I'm gonna, that, that was, that was, it was, it was, it was different, but good. Come on, somebody. Different, but good. Different, but good. And that's why I told them, just do it. Just do it. Just enjoy. Let's enjoy. Let's enjoy. So I'm excited for that. Amen. Don't forget, amen, that we have some food downstairs. Amen. And all proceeds are going towards the modern. We 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 have we have gutted upstairs. It's almost all done. We're just gonna start laying the carpet and start going toward the bottom of it and finishing some stuff up there. Hopefully in a couple of weeks. We're trying to get everything ready so we can help us break. I'm trying to get everything ready so we can start throwing the toddlers and all the all, all the babies inside there. Come on, somebody. So we're just trying to get everything situated. Amen. And and uh, uh, again, also I told everybody, um, December December first is is uh, um, you can wear your mask if you don't want to wear your mask. This is the why I did that. And, and uh, um, nothing else but this because I felt the Lord told me this. He says, I've done everything to protect our church. Everything. Everything to protect our We've cleaned it. We took care of it. Masked everything. We did everything. And, and I, I felt the Lord told me, Edgy, you've done everything you could do now. And just now I felt free. God saying, Okay, the rest is on us. You go, wear the mask. If you don't, that's fine on you. Because he's, this is what the Lord told me. He goes, so no one can ever say he didn't care. Come on, somebody. So you can never can ever say that you, you weren't concerned. And, and, and so that's why I did it. So that we would, I would take away everything the enemy would try to use against me or against our church. Amen. And so now I feel the Lord said, okay. I said, okay. If they want to, you, you can continue wearing. If you don't want to, that's fine. And if anything else changes in the government or if anything else is said, then we will respect what they say because you still got to respect authority. I don't care. I don't care what it says. If I don't respect authority, then I have no business in authority. And so that's why, you know what? I might not, I might not like my president, but I would not disrespect my president. Because we're gonna pray, we're gonna pray for him and pray for our nation the same way. I might not like it, but I still have to respect authority. It's a biblical thing that we must do. Listen to what I'm saying. It's a biblical thing that we must do. Amen. So again, we love you. God bless you. Amen. Give the Lord a great clap. Father, we see you. Amen. Amen. We'll see you Sunday, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock for service. God bless you. And remember, with God, all things are what? Possible. God bless you. Be blessed. Amen. We had an awesome service. Lives were touched. Hearts were changed. I'm telling you, God is on the move, church. And we're grateful for you plugging in and staying connected with us. We know what we have a lot of different avenues where you can watch us on. You can watch us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can watch us on Instagram and allow God to minister you and keep you connected on what we're doing next and on what's taking place and what's going on here at Living Word. And so we're excited because we're seeing God move and we're seeing God just touch lives and God just doing miraculous things. And with your love and with your support and with you just allowing yourself to connect here, God wants to use you to make a difference and make a difference in your family, in your job, in your workplace. The message that God has spoken to you, the message that you've heard, is going to help you and build you to become that man of God and that woman of God you were called to be. Maybe you're, you're saying, Pastor, well, I didn't have that chance to say that prayer. I was too embarrassed or um, I, I, didn't, I, I was struggling to let go of some stuff, but I'm ready now. And so if you're ready now and you're ready to give your heart to God, I want you to say this simple prayer with me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and make me new. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. That simple prayer has saved you, 
delivered you, set you free from your past, from the guilt, from the shame. And I'm telling you now, it's our job to stay plugged in, get involved, read your Bible, and stay away from the things of evil that get you caught up. I'm telling you, great futures ahead of you, great purpose are ahead of you, and we want to be part of that. Maybe you want to comment or leave us a, a message or send us a, a information. We want to help you on your journey, on your new journey with the Lord. And so we're grateful for you. We love you here at Living Word, and we are grateful for you guys. Also, we want you to know we have rehab centers for men and women, those who need help or those who are just tired and going through stuff. And maybe you need just a little bit more than that. Come to our centers. God will help you. God will do great things in you. Great men and women have come out of that. And I'm telling you, I came out of that center. God changed my life 28 years ago, and I haven't been the same. And we want to do the same for families and, and, and friends out there who, who, know, who don't know God and want to know who God is. So we're excited. Come connect with us. Know what's going on. See what's going on here at Living Word. We love you. God bless you. And remember, with God, all things are possible. We were so blessed to have you join us today at Living Word Inland Empire. If you would like to hear more of today's message, head on over to our podcast and search Living Word IE. We want to thank you for joining us. And if you would like to watch more sermons, be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And we can't wait to see you for our next service.